Adam, one of the big questions we get yeah. on Still Entitled, not about the podcast. People ask about R2-D2 and they yeah. ask about your Star Trek captain's chair. Right. Um, so this is, I, I, I've i not wanted to discuss it until now. Okay. Because this was an eBay purchase, a kind of an impulse buy. And I spent too much on it because I'm a, I'm a jerk and didn't do the research. And it arrived and I was like, oh my God, it's terrible. So this is ostensibly Kirk's chair from Star Trek, but in no way, shape or form specifically, is it anything remotely approaching Kirk's chair from Star it's, Trek? It's a little sad it's and a, it's not accurate on top of being no, sad. No, it's, it's totally sad and not accurate and it wobbles and it's, it's just, I won't even sit in it. it it's, can I sit in it? Go, yeah, go it right ahead. It makes a bad sound. It's not comfortable. I don't, oh. Yeah, yeah like the the butt length to depth is no. wrong. It's no. the buttons aren't right. There's no where's the intercom? I don't know. There's no nothing. Right. Yeah. No. I, well, so it's actually canon to no, it's not even because it doesn't have the sw- whatever. It's ridiculous. Basically, this has sat here for the last year, making me angrier and angrier, and that had a purpose. And okay. The purpose was to make me angry enough to make my own. Is this the time where we do the big reveal and here, we go here, away from the bad let's, chair? Let's into walk the good out of here and we'll okay. walk into the next room. Sounds good. Holy cow. Ta-da! That's a little bit better, Adam. So this is accurate in... Mo- Look, I, I won't lie to you. I think there might be a couple places in which this chair is not 100% accurate, mm-hmm. but more like 99.9% accurate. And there are some people who will watch this video and go, ah, he got this wrong. So I, just because of that, I'm not going to say it's 100% accurate, but it's pretty freaking accurate. That's and always the case, though. I, I built the thing entirely from scratch. I built the chair. I did all the upholstery. I did all the woodwork, uh, all the polishing. Did, did you use plans, or were you just kind of eyeballing it from source material? No, there, there are plenty of plans out there they do not all agree with each other Mm -hmm. there is the hero chair captain kirk's original hero chair is uh uh, at the emp project up in seattle Mm -hmm. uh and there's a lot of pictures of it there are some measurements of it but it's a tricky build because so many okay there is one part that isn't finished you can turn it around and show the audience i have not yet finished the leather on the bag yeah besides that this, uh, it is, you know, within, within a quarter, eighth of an inch, really, of every dimension that it could have. Hold on, I'm just, I'm going to sit in it yeah. because it's so, oh, it's really. Well, and you got to do the slouch. You got to get the it's, right. It's just, it's just, yeah. it's just great. So uh, as I was building it, I was thinking, I'd love it to have a feature that no other chair has. Of course, something and, special for and, you. So I ended up adding a couple of features. And one of them was this little viewer, which is only in, it's in the cage, which right. is the unaired pilot for Star Trek. It's also in the menagerie, which uses footage from the cave. And it's mm-hmm. in the second episode, which I think is also referred to as a pilot. I'm a little fuzzy The one on with that. the salt vampires or something like that, yeah. right? Yeah. So, th- and then it's never again. And it's not only on all the, on the captain's chair. It's on every console. And it's even in the captain's, like, quarters. This is just their, this is their iPhone, it's basically. It's like some communications yeah. thing. So, um, I, I actually made this from scratch. This is a 19-inch gooseneck mic boom. Perfect. I vacuumed this. Mm-hmm. We did some, yeah, these are my vacuum form molds made out of Ren Shape, which is modeling material. There's an early one. Now, I did add one other feature here. Okay. Go ahead and put those back over there. I added one other feature, which, uh, you know, I wanted access to the props. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, this base oh. is really, really wide open. So, I made a drawer for the props. This is in case you get boarded. Right, exactly. So, you can pull out your, and you can, you know, dial in. and. So, I mean, can we talk about the controls? Yeah. Because the controls, you... you it, You've done what looked like really accurate controls here to yes, me. Yes, I have. But there's basically five interface panels on the captain's chair. There's the switch bank of mm-hmm. eight switches. These are rocker switches, and I got real rocker switches. Oh. Um, there is the uh, lights display, which is cast uh, 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 resin color displays with lights underneath. Okay. There's the five push buttons over here. Alert, alert, release. What is it? Release pod? The hounds? Release, uh, yeah, I can't remember. Oh, I can't believe I can't remember. Is he this consistent? Moment. Does he use the right buttons on each one? I have just no idea. Like, technical I have no manuals. idea. And then there's the intercom. You know, Scotty, yeah. could you come and uh, bring me some coffee? Yeah. I can't, Captain. Um, 
<laughs> so I've actually, all the buttons actually work. And um, the last thing to do on this chair is to make them all actually functional. So uh, to do that, let's bring in our friend Jeremy Williams of the Game Frame and many other Arduino yes. projects. And he's going to help us wire the whole thing up this afternoon. The secret um, is, is that Jer Jeremy and I have been talking for weeks mm -hmm. about adding functionality to this. And he's been working very hard. And we are now going to wire in that functionality to turn this into... I feel like one of the ultimate captain's chairs. So do you think we can call this a one-day build if we wire it up today? Look, uh, the chair itself took me three days and a full day of upholstery, about a week to paint, and a whole bunch more time to do all the final detailing. So it's very far from a one-day build, but the wiring, wiring in of all the electronics, yeah, I think we can call that a one-day build. Sounds good to me. Let's okay. get Jeremy. Okay. All right, Jeremy. So... There's a lot going on with the functionality I want to put in, a, in the chair. Mm -hmm. um, I've been watching the show and I noticed that the lights in general are almost always on, right? Like in some movies, it's like lights blink on but are mostly off. Right. In this one, the captain's left viewer is generally on with lights blinking off from time to time. Yep. And it's hard to discern that it has any specific functionality based on anything the captain's doing. It's so just I think blinking. that's just blinking. But I want all eight switches to each do different things. I figure mm -hmm. one should be power. Mm -hmm. um, one should perhaps be background noise, like so you could turn that on or off. And then all the rest are sound effects, including the five buttons on the right panel. And then I have a special plan I want to do for the intercom. I want the intercom to do something both when you press it mm -hmm. and when you release it. Okay. And, and that's all possible? Absolutely. What we'll use is, is the Teensy platform, which is kind of an Arduino thing. Okay. But it has a lot of input, so it can handle all of your switches and all of the and can control the lights with a single pin. So um, this is a mock-up. Yeah. This well, this is the actual. This is what we'll use. This is Beautiful. the board, and this will be the uh, the light board. And the light board will take all of the switch inputs on okay. the sides over here for okay. for your buttons and switches. And then it'll play audio through that, and it'll control the lights through this pin right here, and should be good to go. Dude. That is so awesome. Um, we've got a lot of wiring to do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> so, it's not unlike wiring an arcade cabinet, because you have all of your switches on an arcade cabinet for buttons and joysticks right. and everything. Essentially, they all run to a board like this that acts like a keyboard. Well, we're just treating it like you know the same thing, except this is the computer. Oh, this is going to be so cool. I didn't really imagine that everything I wanted was possible. Oh, also. Um, the thing that I didn't talk about before with Will is that on the right-hand console, there's a slot, and it's for these computer cards. Now, I've made these computer cards, but I've made them special. Mm -hmm. I've actually embedded magnets in these four cards in four different configurations, and I'd like them to achieve different messages depending on which card you put in. That is super cool, because looking at these, you can't tell that they're different in any way, shape, or form. Except by except their color. color. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds great. I've never used switches like that before, but we'll, we'll get it done. Okay, cool. Let's get started. All right. And then lift your arms. There we go. There's one part. I'm going to put that there. And uh, OK, so I've set it up with two buses, one positive, one negative for 12 volts. Mm -hmm. But most of your system is 5 volts, Yes, right? I brought a power adapter. So we'll need to splice into your uh, input. So I'm going to disconnect everything here because we're going to rewire it from scratch. Okay, so there's one side. Yeah, all just lifts right out. Wow. I did add one feature to this, which I thought was pretty cool, yeah. which is I buried a subwoofer right under the seat of the chair. Right where it belongs. Because I thought we could play music out of this yep. and it's going to sound awesome. Yes. The thumping. There's also speakers in each arm. Yeah, I have speakers in each arm, and I had these in storage. These are the Minimus 7s. Mm. These are like Tandy's great mistake. They're an amazing project, product made by Radio Shack. They're, they're metal construction, super solid. They sound fantastic, and mm. you can still buy them for like 50 bucks. Um, and I had an old pair lying around, so I figured I cut some holes in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Um, They're the perfect size. I also added into the bottom, um, per a discussion you and I had, I added in these, uh, these light stri strips for, so that we can, for alarm stuff, yes. we can make lights come out of the bottom of yes. the chair. So I guess we're at the stage now where it's time to really just start wiring stuff in. I'm ready when you are. All right, let's do it. 
All right, let's review what we have to do. This was basically yours. Yeah. I retrofitted it. The red here are our LED numbers. The black are our switches. Okay. Different wires. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got to mount the uh, the switchboard somewhere in the arm. I think you had suggested in the right arm. Yeah, we can do it in the right console. Right. There's, uh, yeah, and right then we console. have to run all of our wires into these little um, terminals. Okay. So do you want to mount it first? So um, that all the wires are the right length, or do you want to sort of guess the wire length and, and keep it out and mount them outside? Let's mount it first. Okay. Um, and we're, there's still some wires to run. There's a lot of little busy work still for me to do in terms of putting in uh, the LED. Oh, and you've got a lot of pin crimping to do, right? Yeah, well, Will does. <laughs> Uh, oh, actually, do you want to do these? Start sure. doing the wiring on these guys? Yep. Okay. So this is our right side. This is where the control is, panel's going to be. So this is correct. where we want the end to be. These two will get extensions on them that'll come out through here and come across. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let me give you... Which one's the input? Uh, will, do you want to start... See these new, see these new pencil lines? Mm -hmm. You right can about. widen this out to that on here and on here. Okay. Just, cool. it just stay inside the line. Yeah. Here, you can have a seat there. Oh, you have the speakers. Are these the speakers, Jeremy? I bought a four and an eight ohm. I didn't know what your amp was. You have to tell me. Uh, <laughs> uh, eight ohm. There you go. There we go. Uh, the speakers were, I think, two bucks a piece, so <laughs> figured to uh, cover all eight pieces. ohm. Here we go. I put in code so that when you press the button, it turns yellow if you use RGBs. Ah. Oh. So the button would turn, oh. would turn yellow. Yeah, let's do that. I All can right. do that. Easy. So what we can do with the power is we can put two cables into a single connector and then go to the next. And that way the power oh, daisies. Right, 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 right. Okay. Or, Same thing for the grounds. Yes. Or we have a rail somewhere that we just like. I think the rail's easier, right? Tap into. But, but then we have to make a shitload of little short cables. And then we got to figure out how are we going to tap into that rail. Well, uh, Adam has those little screw terminals that he used. Like, I mean, like how many... I have a ton of screw need? terminals and I just soldered across their bottom to join yeah, them. Yeah, so that's want. something we could do. I mean, we just need one of each, right? One off of each one. Because we can hook them into For the what? rail at the same place. I could also tap you a bus bar easily enough. I mean, in a, probably about 10 minutes. What's a bus bar? That sounds obscene. I don't know what that is. What's that? Uh, you know, just a long bar of brass with, you know, however many screws oh, what you, you need, need for the it. bottom of the... Yeah. Of the yeah. Hellboy glove. What, what gets connected here on this? We have... The signal, first we're starting with just the signal from the microcontroller that tells it what color it is, right? Yeah. So it goes in one bulb and then out the same bulb into the next bulb. So that's two pins on each LED. The other, there's two other pins we need to worry about. The other two pins are, we don't have to worry about. The, the middle ones are, they don't do anything. Okay. So we have, but then for every other one we need power on ground. And we can daisy chain those by putting, you know, as I was saying, two wires into a single pin. And then that would jump to the next power. That's probably better. 
I mean, it might. Two wires into a single pin? As long as you can crimp it in. You know, I don't know how. We need some serious. I've got some 26 gauge wire up there. From a power standpoint, it's probably safest to do like the rail, like tap into some yeah. sort of a bar that has power and ground. I mean, we could, can't we just put a strip of, a, a strip of copper tape on, one, on each side and do ground That's on not going to be enough current. That's not enough? I don't think so. Okay. I just, I don't imagine it would be. It'd be better if we had something like that that we could really screw into. Not that, not that it's big. Not, not that big, yeah. But something um, like that. All right. Let me engage with this for a second. Each one of these will take 60 milliamps. It adds up. Right. So in this diagram, that's the triangle. Where are the... I mean, you could do the brass rail, or we could do just put a big chunk of copper wire, solid core copper wire. Okay, well, I mean, it's I possible. Mean, I don't mind doing it. I, I, that, that, is, that is something I know how to do and can do, but I don't mm -hmm. know what, how you... Uh, okay. Really, it's up to Adam. Well, that's uh, about... Th Whatever's faster. <laughs> about 31 solder points for, the, for each power and ground. But I can twist the powers and grounds together. That's true. For half yeah, and solder them together. Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's just number them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm just doing each oh, okay. bulb yep. pair since that's what we're doing. All right, so that would be, these two would need to be attached, the triangles need to be attached to the ground. The okay, so, the, so that's the last one here. Mm hmm. Okay. Yep. It's three and six. Um, so three is ground and six is ground. Uh -huh. Yeah, this, this okay. is. Okay. And then you can follow the path. So this would be um, voltage is the upper uh, from that. W and skip the middle ones. So okay, the so middle ones are gone. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Look. Um, and so then this is voltage. No, this no. is seven is voltage. Seven and. Yep, seven okay. and ten. And so ground gets daisy chained together and sold as voltage. Yes. The and thing that so really that needs to be da uh, daisy chained is 9 to 1. It comes in 9, comes out 1. It will go in 12, out 4. This is going to be a little tight on the right side. That's fine. I can cut this in half. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Is that what that's for? Is that for conducting yeah. electricity? Um, this is just K&S brass, staple of every hobby shop ever. Um, what I might recommend is before gluing it down, actually using solder to make a bunch of points on here. I was here. thinking about that. Yeah, and yeah. then you're not melting this, and then the moment you touch it, you're all good. Yeah, that's a good idea. We'll make this the hot rail and this the ground, mm -hmm. seems like. Um, and three and it? six to ground. Three and six to ground. Which ones are the data? Four goes to nine, 12 goes to one on the next one. All right, we are uh, three hours in to the wiring the captain's chair, and there's a lot of fiddly little bits to wire. Um, I'm not exactly, hey Jeremy, where do we stand? Well, we got a lot of the LEDs wired from underneath the cabinet, but as far as anything we see up top, it's not there yet. Um, I think we have about 300 things to solder over here, and Will is being a soldier about it. 300 things to solder, um, hoping to finish within the next five hours. We got a lot of work ahead of us. Does she, do these need to be connected? No. Okay. Uh, not to use oh. those. So th this defaults to off, and you have to have signal to turn it on, right? The lights? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm bad at electronics. Will you bring me an Apple box? Yes. But each of... This is, should have the same voltage across all of the rails mm -hmm. until something opens. For the power? No. Yeah, across yeah. the LEDs, right? So why are these flickering more than these flickering? I have That's no idea. Question. It's the very power's strange. Coming in here, these guys, this row's fine, and this row's, this one's really bad. Like these three are flickering at about the same rate. Actually, that one too. Is it just because of the colors? These different? four are doing great. Are they in a series? Like one, two, three, four? No, it's not. No. So power comes in here. The jump is over here. I don't. I don't know. I don't like the power rails. That, I mean, that's the most suspect thing. 
we tried this on the strip that's mounted underneath, and all the lights lit up. Right. So we know it can handle this many lights. Oh, that's true. So you think that there could be some bad connections? Um, I don't know. Or you think the brass is just I too just, resistant? Yeah, I, th I wonder if it's just eating up too much of the current, or if it's if it's making it noisy. Uh, yeah, a little bit of blinking. There we go. Yeah, they're doing all sorts of cool Tron-like uh, shit. Yeah. So, so uh, I mean, so, okay. I can't explain it. Uh, where's signal so going? This is so that's signal, signal to that's the signal for RGBs. That's signal for okay. RGBs. Ready? Yeah. Go. What? Oh, the lights are flickering. So the, these look good. Those look good. Okay. So are, now, hold on. The RGB disconnect first. signal and connect it to this. Here we go. Okay. Go for it. Ah. Why were they? Are they PWM got badly? So is it? Are so you, what he did was he snipped the signal wire between the RGBs and the mm -hmm. straight whites. Mm -hmm. huh. So what did we just realize here? Anything? Okay. So I bet that there's a short between either the ground and the positive on the blues. We have had some difficulties with our LEDs. Um, the nature of those difficulties, I can't quite tell you because we haven't sussed out exactly why they're not working, but we are running through, um, I think our fifth different systems test to see if we can get them to be steady and to light up and thus take the signal from the board. If this doesn't work, we're gonna uh, abandon, I think, this path and go down a totally different so path. In which case, yeah, for you, there's just going to be a cut to us with a solution, right. but for us, there's going to be like a couple of weeks of ordering stuff. Oh! Oh, oh no, no. Flickering. That, that, that's not what we want to see. <laughs> I know that looks good. It's like blinky lights, but it's not the right let's, blinky let's lights. Let's try the, um, let's switch the data. Why were two not even on? Because they're not, there's no data on that one. Oh, that that's actually a good it. sign because it means there's no floating ground on the on the data line anymore. So yeah. it may have been your brass that was the problem. It's not my brass. Adam say brass. it's my brass. So see that's working. Those are still floating. These are good. It's the same as before. So it wasn't the brass that was the problem. That's also good news. So it's the data line. And we know the data line works because we can hook it to the other other LEDs. Yeah but why are these on and off? And why isn't that one you on? You know what that one is that one good? Here, one, one, let's, let's cut that guy out. Let's cut this, this one out. This one that's dim, Yeah. that should not be dim. I have a feeling that that's a bad guy. All right, Jeremy, time has passed. A little bit. For them, it was just a cut. For us, a couple of weeks have passed. Where were we and where are we? Uh, well, we were in a good spot here. Everything's pretty well wired. Mm -hmm. um, we ran into a problem with some LEDs. We, 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 we got enthusiastic with our soldering and we burnt out some of the LEDs. Well, that's the problem. The, the, LED, the work is, looks great. It's very industrial. It has a great look to it. Yeah. Uh, but the problem is this is kind of a permanent installation for right. LEDs that are temperamental. So, Ever and so changing them out becomes really difficult. Yeah. And we had some failures in maybe some LEDs that caused a failure across the whole array. Exactly. Like when you're dealing with these smart LEDs, you don't just apply voltage and get light. There's a little chip inside of every one of them that's very heat sensitive. And it needs a signal. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we didn't. Uh, it's very hard to debug this. So yeah. the work is is fantastic looking. Unfortunately, hard to debug. So all right. So I, this one gone. So. I went home and I soldered together oh, a more simpler look at um, that. circuit. So I actually feel dumb when I see this. This is beautiful. The nice thing is the LEDs come from strips, so there's half as many solder points. So hopefully it's a matter of dropping those in and then wiring up the switches. We should be good to go. Fabulous. We, we should be able to start uh, talking to Scotty in a very short period of time. I should hope so. What is up first? What should we start with? Um, I think we should, if you want to, find a way to mount the lights, Okay, that would be good. Um, I also have an improved power supply, Excellent. but I have a 20 amp single unit power supply for the five volt. Oh, so we can pull these guys out of the arrangement. Yep, 
And I got some rails for the five volt. Oh, look at that. Uh, that is swanky So too. those are the things we need to wire up. And then once that's in, we can uh, get the switches done and that's it. Well, and then we have your display. Ah, the display, right. So just to reiterate, this is a unit that's only in the first two or three episodes of Star Trek and the original pilot shot without William Shatner. Um, and I kind of got obsessed to have this in the captain's chair. There are a bunch of different arrangements of the captain's chair over the course of Star Trek, but this little viewer, uh, it's like every bedside lamp in the, in the pilot of Star Trek, uh, and I tasked myself with making one. So this is a 19-inch microphone gooseneck, and I actually vacuum-formed and uh, assembled this out of black styrene. So we've got a little video screen to put in here to add functionality that nobody else's captain's chair has. And no one else has ever seen. I mean, no one has ever seen what that screen looks like, so. And I, I actually have, I've, I managed to obtain some fairly esoteric reference material of exactly what that, oh, that's what awesome. that front looks like. So a couple of little LEDs, cool. and I've wired it back to here so we can get it into the power supply, and uh, we should have uh, one of the ultimate captain's chairs soon. The ultimate captain's chair. I can't wait to see this. Okay, cool, let's get started. All right. We could just mount it like this so you yeah, can reach in, in yeah, and press the, the Bluetooth. Button. I might do it in the next one over just so there's... Yeah. yeah. So oh, that's bottom. great. I love that plan. That's the marked one, so I should get a positive reading out of this. And I do. Test two. Three, two, one. What should be happening? Should, these should all be lit they're up. Li they're lit, aren't they? No. no. There's an LED right here. Oh. That's, that's not lit. Oh, you know, we probably need to plug it in. Hey, that <laughs> wouldn't be a bad idea. Okay, on. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. All five are lit? Yeah. Yep. That's, that's good. That's good. That's, that's, that's some success. Yes. Let's, uh, let's get all the LEDs going, because we're on a roll. It could just be the volume, man. Is that 12 that it's supposed to be getting? No, five. No, so the solution it really is to wire the battery into the whole thing. <laughs> Fucking fuck. Um. We have uh, been troubleshooting and problem solving, and we now have this at a state where the lights are all working. That's right, right? That's right. Okay, yeah. the lights all work, um, and the sound works. Can we get a sound effect going? Sure. The sound is actually happening. The next stage, where now that we've got that going, is to hook up the switches so that each of these things actually yields a result and it's all programmed into the board. It should be pretty cool. Here we go. All right, you lovelies. Hold together. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree, Scotty. <laughs> Let's start hooking up some switches. Let's do it. Okay. All right, all the switches are in. Let's do a test. Ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right, so hold on. I'm just going to start with the one we already know works. Scotty, is this test going to uh, work? It's impossible. Things like this can't happen. Scotty, that's a little bit negative. But can it change the laws of physics? I understand that, but just something positive would be nice to hear. We can't do it. If we keep the speed 
lead will blow up any minute now. Okay, let's do the test anyway. Here we go. Red alert. Excellent. Lights on the bottom look good. Extra red alert. Yep. Red light on the bottom. Good. That one's still not working. We, we can that. suss that out. Transporter. Excellent. Oh, wow. We got some lights on the underside, too. Cool. And uh, this one. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Scotty, that all seems to be working pretty well. Montgomery Scott, chief engineer. Call me Scotty. I, I know. All right. Um, let's try the computer cards. Oh, so wow. yeah. what we have is some read switches in here. That means magnetically activated switches. And I've embedded magnets in the computer cards. So if we put them in. <laughs> that is so cool. Hold on. Here we go. Here's a different one. Yeah, if you flip them around. They, they oh, really? Yeah. That is freaking awesome. Okay, rocker switches. Okay, here we go. Library computer. Unable to comply. Inaccurate. Inaccurate. Incorrect. Oh, again the What? Stop! Everybody stop! Hey, Scotty, abort the, uh, the destruct sequence. <laughs> All right. That's that's ninety nine percent working. Yep. Now, just so you know, the more of these that you have switched on, the faster these will, oh, nice. will, will dance. Great. Okay, so that goes there. Okay, look at that. That is sexy. Let's put this thing together and um, try it out for real. All right. Yeah, no, I know the next step is for me to sit in it, but just excuse me, I have to get ready. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is good. Oh. Captain's log. Stardate. I, I don't know what the stardate is. Anyway, we're testing out my new captain's chair. Here we go. Let's see. Good. All right. Let's talk to let's talk to Chief Engineer Scott, shall we? Scotty, can you tell me the status of my captain's chair? Captain, what do we do? Pretty sure I asked you that, Scotty. Should I turn on the general bridge noises first? We're going down, Captain. All right. Scotty's not going to be any help. Here we go. This is so awesome. Oh my God, I wish I'd had one of these when I was 10. Okay, let's try the computer sounds. Oh, really? Thank you. Data and error? Oh, apparently the same thing. Actually, maybe I can help you with a, uh, with a computer program here. Here we go. Nice. Incongruous. Humorous. Oh, that is fantastic. Okay. Let's go for the red alerts. We've got some lights underneath. Let's watch them go. Red alert. Yeah, look at that. 
It would be so annoying to watch a Star Trek movie with me right now. Okay, let's go for the extra red alert. Yeah. Secondary klaxon. Uh, nice. Launching of the pod. Okay. Transporter sounds. Oh, yeah. I can't remember what this is. Oh, phasers! Phasers full! <laughs> Another one. Oh! Yeah! All right. Uh, Scotty, the chair seems to be working fine. Don't do it, Captain. <laughs> Jeremy, come here. Yes. Dude, this thing is the greatest toy ever built um, right now. Glad to add my 2%. You did an amazing job on the chair. Dude, all the stuff works. Every yeah. button. Oh, wait, we have two secret buttons. <laughs> we have two secret buttons. One that plays the fight music. Yeah. And then, the last secret button. This, will you press it? Please. It's this one? Yep. Come on. Dude, this is, this. They, they, I know it was a bit of fits and starts, Yeah. but this is magnificent work. I'm, I'm so glad. happy you worked I'm with so me I'm so glad to this. see it working. All right, that's enough. You should have a seat in it. Yeah. Come on. Excellent. That's good. Yeah. Scotty, I need more power. If I push these impulse engines too hard in the condition they're in, they'll pull apart. <laughs> you're, is, gonna, you're gonna have some, some fun in this. I am gonna what I can't wait to do is for someone to sit down and go, oh this is really cool, and I go, hold on a yeah. second, and push that button yeah. and say, push anything, and they'll be like, no way! That's, that's what I look for. Yeah. And I love this. Isn't that great? Yeah, nice touch. I'm totally, I might add two LEDs to that to make it extra accurate, but it, 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 it's, it's a feature I haven't seen on anybody else's captain's chair. Even Trek fans, you might have to explain this to them. Uh, I'm pretty sure Trek fans know. They're, right now they're writing onto the comments <laughs> right now. I, I totally know about that! Dude, this is Captain Adam Savage signing out. Oh, they don't salute on Star Trek. <laughs>